We was very fearful growing up because you never knew exactly when it was going to happen, you know. So when the men went to work in the coal mines, you just kind of didn't know for sure if they was going to be some of those that made it out. When an explosion happens, the people that are registered to work in that mine, they notify the families. And if the family has a member in school, they notify the student to go home. They don't say why, but they tell them, get out, go back home now. Don't, don't stay for the rest of the class. got a job because my dad wasn't working too well. He wasn't too well. He had lung problems with uh, coal dust. So he, he didn't do too well working. So I decided to help out. We was just blessed that our dad got out. He had some accident. He had a broken toe one time or something. But uh, they said they, I know from what my dad used to tell them, they were awful hard. There were a lot of individuals getting killed with a sleep fall. Uh, there was a Greek fellow who was going to retire and on his last day of work, I forget what mine it was, but I have a record of it, as he was coming out of the mine with his foreman. His foreman was from Star City and the two were, they knew each other real well because they had worked together for many years. As they were walking out, the roof come down and killed both of them. I saw what took place up here, how many people got killed and how many were injured and with explosions like the Osage blew up in 42 during the war and killed 56 and then not long after that First level where my dad worked, blew up and killed 20. That was in 42. And in January of 43, first level 15 blew up and killed a few. Oh, it was so sad. And we got used to hearing the sound because whenever an explosion would happen, I don't know, there was always some kind of sound like a horn or something. And when you heard that, you just knew it was something bad, you know, going on. And uh, there was one explosion at Purse Club number two, that's where we lived. And there was this, um, one in Purse Club 15 over here. And that was my, uh, my, my sister's husband was killed in that. Uh, and I think during the war, and you know the coal company had good ways of getting production. Mm -hmm. Like one time they, had a, they would have a contest. They would compete with the shifts. They would say now, going to compete and whoever wins will get a free dinner. And to win you had to outproduce the other shift. So they would work hard to win to get that dinner. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they would neglect safety rules. You know, they would say, oh, let it go, let's we gotta we gotta get some tonnage so we can eat on their at their expense mm -hmm. instead of we paying it for them. But anyway. have ways of getting the coal out. Well, my dad missed all those explosions, and I kind of think it because we had a mom that believed in prayer. She prayed for my dad a lot. He worked for first club number two, and that happened to be during the time when it exploded. And, and the reason, I think one of the reasons why he survived was a story about my mother having a dream she had a dream of something happening, so she told him, you're not going to work tomorrow. And he said, yes, I am. And he said, so you're not. And he said, why? And then she told him that she had a dream. And he said, that was just a dream. I'm going to work. And she said, I'm not packing your lunch anyway. <laughs> he didn't go. And that, that explosion took place and killed 20.
one of the things that happened that caused um, safety rules be changed because of people getting killed. 